Oh hey, it's Budget Girl. She hasn't posted anything since this whole pandemic situation began. Where, where you been? Barely holding it together. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Hi, I am Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I am not dealing well at all with this whole international pandemic virus self-isolation type thing and if I being in one of the most privileged positions that you can be in this situation with i.e. I can work from home I have the financial means to weather this storm I have a safe environment I am not in necessarily the quadrant that would die if I got it. I am just not doing well and I figure if I am not doing well then some of you guys might not be handling this very well either and I've seen a lot of content coming out over the past two weeks that has been extremely positive and motivational and that is fantastic <laughs> and we need that kind of content right now but I also think we need people who are kind of rising up and not saying like you know take now to start a new business or learn a new language or like push yourself really hard i feel like it might be okay to say take now to not have a mental breakdown <laughs> and just get through this so um, which is what I've been trying to do. And I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the things that I have done that have been recommended by the internet. All of the advice that is getting thrown around and we're just getting inundated with so much stuff, uh, it's not one size fit all. I am trying to share these with you in the hopes that you can choose your own solution for how to deal with this mentally, physically, financially. Let's be gentle with ourselves and figure out what it is that our minds and bodies need and try to give them that. Here's some stuff that I've tried that has helped my mental health over the past couple of weeks and some stuff that has not. And I'm gonna tell you why. And I feel like if we know ourselves, we can kind of figure out which of these are gonna help us and which are not and we can, we can adjust our actions accordingly. <laughs> First thing that has helped me, stretching. I am newly working from home and when I work at my work, I have a standing desk that I'll admit I do not use all the time, but just by the action of having to commute to work, walk around the building that I'm in, um, get up and down, talk to other people, I am moving at work a lot more than I'm currently moving at a home. I have also been doing a lot of work from my couch. Hey puppy which is uh, fine. <laughs> a lot of people will tell you that's not fine, set up a desk, but um, it's been kind of tough on the body. So I've been doing a lot of stretching. I haven't done any like guided stretching yet, but just kind of, I've done yoga before, just kind of listening to my body and trying to make sure to get up and stretch fairly regularly, at least once a day has helped a lot. <laughs> just with loosening and not feeling so stiff. All right, now something that has not helped that a lot of people are recommending, cleaning. My, I keep my house pretty clean. That's just the way that I prefer it. And that was my first inclination. The first week that I was home was to clean and clean and clean and to kind of take control of my environment. But after vacuuming six times, I realized that cleaning is kind of my natural procrastinating response and I do it to motivate myself to do something positive. But in this case, it wasn't motivating me because I wasn't procrastinating anything. It was just stressing me out, especially since there are four beings in this house right now that are constantly kind of making it re-messy. And it's getting messier than it normally would since we're eating here three meals a day, we're self-isolating, and constantly like getting it back to the level of clean that I wanted was driving me insane. So I've actively pressed pause on the deep cleaning, I think it would stress me out further. So I'm not gonna. I'm continuing to clean my home on kind of a daily basis as I normally would, but I'm not letting myself over clean because it's not creating a positive response in my body. It's making me freak out. The next thing that has actually been helping me during this time is candle. I already had these and it has kind of been a weekend ritual of mine for a while to 
spend some time like out on the couch watching tv on the weekends lighting a candle but this has now become a daily thing making the place smell good is somehow very restorative <laughs> to both me and jacob so we are actually switching out candles a lot i have some essential oils going it sounds very foo-foo but it has actually been working just a little calming relaxing aromatherapy i guess a tip that i've seen a lot online about working from home that hasn't helped wearing real clothes <laughs> No, it's athleisure time, baby. I'm sorry, if this works for you, that's wonderful. But putting on real clothes right now, like the clothes that I wear to work in normally, is going to depress the hell out of me. It is a perk to work at home and be able to wear like workout clothes and kind of like athleisure wear. That is one of the only good things about all of this. Why would a tip tell me to put on real clothes for this? Also, workout clothes actually make me feel like I need to do something. So that's been more motivational than wearing real work clothes. I don't know who's up with that tip. I just don't. <laughs> it is athleisure time, friend, friend. Something that kind of works working sitting up straight at like your kitchen table instead of your couch sometimes <laughs> right now i'm sitting at my kitchen table it's fine but in a while i'm gonna move back to sitting on the couch and that's fine too <laughs> i think variety is uh, also part of trying to stay mentally on top of working from home so don't feel like you have to set up a real desk. Something that has helped, meal planning. We set down a meal plan of meals that sounded good, balanced ones with meats and carbs and vegetables, and we wrote it on that board back there. And we made about 12 full meals worth of meal plans with stuff that we already had in the home. And it just kind of helped not also have to have the discussion of what are we gonna eat tonight? We can just pick it off the board, it's a lot better, <laughs> a lot better. Yeah, because we need to actually make sure that we're using up all of the food that we have and not wasting anything because going to the grocery store is a nightmare <laughs> and I'd like to avoid that as much as possible. So meal planning definitely helps. If you're extra into that inventorying, what you have in your fridge, pantry, or freezer, also a good step. I have a free inventory printable for your freezer that can also be used for like your fridge or your pantry on budgetgirl.com. I will link that below. It's cute, you can put it up on the fridge, it's not ugly, might help. Has not been helping. So the thought to take on a big project right now, like a lot of people have been recommending, uh, has not been helping. <laughs> At all I haven't had the mental capacity once I got off of like my regular work to pretty much do anything for my side hustle which is this budget girl which is insane <laughs> because I thought I would be fine because I usually go to work all day and then I come home and I work on this uh, but because there's no separation between work work and homework uh, and just all the additional stresses of working from home, I haven't gotten much of anything done on my side hustle, much less doing giant projects like cleaning out my shed or the hell closet or some like just kind of massive thing. I don't think right now is the time for you to take on a massive thing unless maybe you're suddenly unemployed and you have some like time to kill before your next job starts. So no big projects that will feel overwhelming at all. Something that has helped actually verbalizing your fears and your insecurities and your thoughts about everything that is happening. I have fallen into the trap before of just kind of mentally looping my thoughts and they just keep rotating over and over and over again. Actually speaking them aloud to someone that you trust, like your partner or your friend or journaling them is a much better way to get them out of your head than uh, just kind of letting it tornado inside. Something that hasn't helped, talking with certain friends. So a big tip right now is to jump on like a Zoom call and hang out with your friends. And I would say that's fine <laughs> if they are the type of friends that you go to that are in like a good headspace 
right now. Getting on a call with some other people that are also in a bad headspace when you're in a bad headspace is going to freak you out more. <laughs> so I had a Zoom call with two friends of mine who are actually like more scared of this whole situation than I am. And I walked away feeling about a hundred pounds heavier <laughs> because we were just kind of like amping each other up. It was a, it was a bad idea. If you are going to have a Zoom meeting with friends, um, and I'm not saying to abandon your friends that are in a bad headspace, but maybe make it not like a just a chit chat thing. Watch like a funny Disney movie together or something, but don't just circle around about how scary the world is right now because that's gonna make it worse for you, promise. <laughs> Something that has helped me, reading, painting, and crafting. So I've always been a huge reader, but getting into novels, specifically fiction, <laughs> fiction is important right now, has really helped with making my brain kind of disconnect from the stresses of everyday life and just kind of let myself fall into another world for a while. If you want to be a little less, if you want to be a little less out of it, I ordered some watercolor paints and a watercolor book from michaels.com and did a pickup, curbside pickup, where I didn't have to interact with anyone at all. I spent $13 on supplies and I made this from a YouTube beginner watercolor tutorial. It, I'm pretty proud of it. And I will link the tutorial below if you would like to try it. It was very easy, it only took an hour, and I guarantee you because I was trying to keep up with the lady in the tutorial, I was not thinking or panicking about the world while I was doing it. I also built this, <laughs> which is a kit I have had for at least a year that Jacob got me for like a miniature coffee house. It was infuriating at times, but it definitely got my mind off of things for a while and also had me working with my hands. I will link this kit below, but be warned, the instructions make no sense and I had to deviate a lot. So if you're a perfectionist, this is not for you and this is definitely not a beginner kit. I did get very frustrating with it several times and I almost threw away the light kit. But now look, not helping. TV shows about apocalypse scenarios <laughs> or end of the world stuff. Uh, you can actually see on Netflix it's recommending like, and Amazon it's recommending like Contagion and Z Nation and all of these like shows and videos and I will admit I uh, watched a zombie show for a while the first couple of days and it did nothing positive for my mental health. I have since switched to The Office which I had actually never seen before and a lot of you guys are gonna be really shocked by that. I had literally never watched The Office before, but that has been excellent for kind of making it feel like I'm still at work. And even though it's a bit of an insane show sometimes, it is helping somehow. Comedies only right now, lighthearted only is kind of the rule. We've been watching a lot of like silly shows on Disney Plus, uh, Sister Act, highly recommend. Haven't seen that since I was a kid. It holds up so awesome, so wholesome, hilarious. Whoopi Goldberg is insanely amazing. Highly recommend. <laughs> One thing that has kinda been helping is small organizing projects. So I cleaned out my leggings drawer and my t-shirt drawer and I threw away some old like painting leggings and um, like sweatpants that I knew I was never gonna wear again and just kind of refolded everything into those drawers and that felt helpful because it was very small, it was very contained, it wasn't cleaning, um, but it was just a small organizing project and that helped a little. I am not gonna try to do that all over my house though because I think that would stress me out. Another thing that has been helping me deal with all of this is checking my finances. Now, every investing advisor in the world is telling you not to check like your 401k balance, your investment balances right now because they're scared you're gonna freak out and sell everything. That's not what I'm talking about. In situations like this, I find great comfort in checking or creating an emergency budget, which is something I have advocated for for years. And I will link a video on how to do that down below. Essentially reviewing what the minimum amount is that you need to be able to survive off of makes facing unknown financial future 
just a little bit more manageable. It makes you realize that there are options with your money and me looking at my savings, me looking at my budgets and my financial plans and reassuring myself that even if the world is a scary place right now, I knowing what options I have makes it feel a lot less insane. Thing that has been working for me, playing with my pets. <laughs> they seem to be very happy. Well, come here. Oh, until now, <laughs> uh, Rory and Maggie in general are very excited that Jacob and I are home all day because usually we abandon them all day. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're fans. They have been extra annoying, but uh, they also give so much love. Walking with them has also been something that has been helping. Uh, we've actually started going for two walks a day. One mid-morning <laughs> and then one in the evening before bed. Just even one lap around the apartment complex. Calms them down a little bit. I think it calms me down a little bit and it also gets us moving just a tad. And the final things that have been helping me get through this and actually wrap my head around this whole new reality is A, trying to be as grateful as possible for everything that I have, recognizing all of my blessings and how privileged I am in this situation, and also trying to figure out ways that I can help. One of my best friends, Jamie, is actually a hospice nurse in California right now and she is facing so much stress so much stress that i cannot even imagine she is exposed to this virus they are underprepared as far as um, safety equipment she has to make a lot of really hard calls right now and i would not want to be in her position or really anyone in the medical profession's position and so i have been reaching out to her to be a ear for her to vent and express her fears to. I've offered to buy her meals or safety supplies if she can get her hands on them or find a place to order them. There are places online where if you have the means you can donate. Um, there are ways in your community to be able to give back and even if it's something as small as buying a gift card to a local restaurant that is saying we're not going to survive this unless people buy if you can afford to do so maybe do that maybe reach out to people that might not be able to go to the grocery stores in your neighborhood or apartment complex check in with the people around you and see what you can do to help and it will help improve your own mental reality of your situation. Perspective is harsh sometimes, but it can also be healing and kind of snap us out of it. I am going to leave some resources that I've been made aware of, of ways that people can help and ways that people can get help if you've been affected, if you've lost work, if uh, you need assistance for things. Got a whole list of stuff down below that will hopefully ease some of your burdens if you're watching this. If you're watching this, I hope that you find some peace in all of this chaos and know that no storm lasts forever. We will get through this. We will get past this. We are resilient. We are strong. We are stronger than that. I hope this video maybe helped or even just showed you that not everyone out there is dealing with this super well. And maybe that makes you feel a little bit less alone because Right now in self-isolation, I think a lot of us are feeling really alone and like we have to act like we're keeping it together when a lot of us are not. And it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Bye.